In lesson 2.4, we're going to do some more mathematical modeling. Things like points, rays, lines, segments, and planes, uh, we learned about those in chapter 1, are called the mathematical models of some physical objects. And often, uh, models make solving a problem easier. So let's say we're going to go to a party. And there are 30 people at this party, and they're all going to shake hands with everybody else. How many handshakes happened at the party? Well, believe it or not, you can actually use a diagram to model that. So the vertices, or the points, are going to be the people, and the segments that join them are going to be the handshakes. So let's take a look. Down below here, you will notice that if there is one person, you're not going to have any handshakes. However, if I know that there's going to be two people, I will have, oops, sorry. If there are two people, I'm going to have one handshake. So these two people are the people, of course, on the ends here. So those are the two people in the blue. Um, if I look at having three people in the chart, what I'll notice uh, the, these three people, here's one, here's two, here's three. You'll see that there are three segments, or in other words, three handshakes. We get to four people. So one, two, three, four. And all of a sudden, we jump up to six handshakes. And then I go to five people. One, two, three, four, five. And I see that with five people, there are 10 segments, or in other words, 10 handshakes. And I can continue to do this and start to find a pattern. So in the hexagon, that means that there are six people shaking hands at a party. And I notice that if that happens, that there are a total of 15. So then what ends up happening in the end? And what's gonna happen if there are 30 people? Well, what I'll tell you is, this takes a little bit of figuring out to do, trying to find this pattern. But <clears throat> what we find out um, is that with one vertex, there were no segments. With two vertices, there were one segment. Three, there were two. Four, there were three out. Or, or in other words, there's always one less segment than there are vertices. And we think that for four-point shape, you would have 12 handshakes, but we only see six. Likewise, for three, we think it should be um, six, but it's only three. And to clench what's going on here, in the five-pointed figure, you'd think it'd be 20, but you see it's 10. We can hypothesize that every single time that this is happening, we're taking half of what's going on. Why? Because the handshakes are double, because if you and I are shaking hands, you shook one hand and I shook one hand, but it was the same handshake, and that's why we're dividing by two. Therefore, if you follow this and you read this paragraph over again slowly, what you'll see is you would normally think that this pattern would be the number of vertices times the number of vertices minus one. For example, if there are 10 people at the party, you would think it would be 10 times nine, which is 90 handshakes. But that's because you and I were counting the same handshakes with each other. So you have to chop that in half, which is the number down below. So this n times n minus 1 over 2 is the number of handshakes that are going on. If I was talking about 30 people at the party, what this means is with 30 people that you are going to have 30 times 29, because that's 30 minus 1, divided by 2. And so you would multiply that out to find your answer. And again, really, the answer in this particular case and example is not really what I want you to understand. What I want you to understand is that we can look at a pattern and develop a rule. And the rule was the thing that we saw down here below. N was the number of people at the party, and then multiply that by one less than the number of people at the party, and divide by two. Why? Because we saw a pattern. Sometimes we can find patterns from other pictures as well. So take a look at the picture up at the top here with the dots. Notice 
that you see that all of these dots form what we call a triangular pattern. If you look at the first number that we see, we see that there's one dot. In the second group of dots, there are three. In the third group of dots, there are six. In the fourth group of dots, there are ten. They call this a triangular pattern because it looks like a triangle, I guess. But kind of cool is that if I want to, I could take those exact same dots and just reorganize them. So the one dot doesn't really change very much. It's just one dot. But look at what happens when I put in the three dots into a different looking pattern. It's still a triangle, but in every single case, it's a right triangle. And if you use your imagination, you could possibly see that it could make a rectangle, or I should say at least a quadrilateral. So the interesting thing is, as I look at that pattern, here's what I notice I could do. If I notice that in those original three dots, so let me draw the originals here. In the purple, here is my original dot, my original, so this is the one, this is the three, this is the six, and this is the 10. So here are my original dots in purple that were reorganized from the previous page. And notice that in addition to these purple dots, I added some greenish colored dots. And these green dots turned all of these into rectangles. So in the first rectangle, what you'll notice is I have a um, one by two rectangle dots. In the second one, I have a um, two by three dots. Then I have a three by four dots. And then a four by five dots. So these numbers, the numbers one, two, three, four, are talking to the picture in the pattern the first picture, the second picture, the third picture, the fourth picture, but they also can correspond to the number of dots on one of the sides. And so these numbers that you see are the ends. So this is my n number. And what you'll notice is, kind of interestingly enough, that the other numbers, the two, the three, the four, and the five, are that number plus one more. And so as I look at these things, as usual, I want to look at the pattern. So you would think that the next group um, you would take, for the rectangles that is, the n times the n plus 1. But the n times the n plus 1 produces the rectangle, which is the purple and the green dots. So what I want to do, just like in the handshake, is I want to divide that by 2. So you end up seeing a rule that says n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And again, this all came from, a, the most important thing about this lesson is how to look at a pattern and develop a rule. Sometimes you'll have to rearrange your picture. Sometimes making a chart is good. Sometimes noticing what I noticed as I wrote down the sizes of the rectangles, that's good. And all of these things lead us to rules. What I will tell you is that these two rules that I've talked about here, this triangular number pattern rule, is important and will show up again, probably on a quiz or a test, that n times n plus 1 over 2, as well as in maybe your homework, and also the rule that we talked about with the handshakes, this n times n minus 1 rule divided by 2, will also show up. So look for those two. Kind of complicated, not so easy for people to come up with on their own, but will show up somewhere again.